Hi, I'm Josie, and I love to use a lot of paint. Hey, this is Josie Lewis for Blick, and today I want to talk to you about the Utrecht line of artist acrylic paints. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I use the Utrecht Artist Acrylic Colors as well as some of their excellent mediums. Welcome to my acrylic painting setup. For this project, I'm using cadmium yellow, alizarin crimson, and cerulean blue. Also, quinacridone magenta makes an appearance later. First up, we have Utrecht Gloss Gel Medium. I scoop it out with a palette knife. I also use a lot of white, so I get the tubs. I like to use a gray tone disposable palette because then I can really see the colors I'm mixing. My painting surface is a four by six piece of hardwood that's been primed on all sides. I like to use about a one-to-one -one mix of paint to gel medium because it really extends the paint and it gives it more body. The gel medium looks cloudy here, but it dries clear. You can see that the pigment load of these paints really holds up. The Trek paint is really buttery, smooth, and dense with incredible color quality. I like to mix the paint with a small diamond shaped palette knife. With this project, I decided to start with a tint of a red, which just means I added a little bit of white. Once I'm done mixing, then comes the fun part. I pull out my plastic spatula style painting knife and evenly distribute the paint across the backside of the knife and then carefully squish it right on. I love to create subtle gradients in my color palette. And one way I do this is something called the mother method. I made that up. I mix up a large amount of a color, in this case the alizarin crimson with white and gel medium. And after I use it the first time, then I steadily add white or another color to create a color or value transition. As usual, I prefer to do most of the mixing with the smaller palette knife which seems a little bit easier to me. Scraping the palette and turning the paint over until there is very little variation left. Then I use the spatula paint knife with the new slightly altered color and again load it up and squish it on. At some point in this process, I'll be ready to switch from simply making a tint, which is adding white to a color, to adding a color to a color. Whoop, whoop. In this case, I'm adding a little yellow to that tint alizarin crimson mix to create kind of a peach tone. And that also is part of the mother method because you can see I use that same pile of alizarin crimson paint to create that next tone in the ladder, as I like to call them, my color ladder. Now you can see a sped up version of the same process, continually adding a little bit more color, a little bit more paint, a little bit more gel medium as necessary to create these subtle shifts in color that work their way down this thick paint gradient painting. And right around here you're going to see the introduction of a little Queen of Cridone magenta, which is one of my favorite reds and in my opinion makes a little bit of a better lilac purple color than the alizarin crimson. The number one question I get asked about these super thick paintings is naturally how long do they take to dry? And it depends on the thickness, of course. 
what'll happen is that the top layer gets a skin almost right away so you can touch it it's like it's not even tacky but you can feel the squishy paint underneath and I would not do anything crazy with these paintings for at least five six days just to make sure that nothing bad happens Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. If you want to check out more of my work, you can find me over at my website, josielewis.com, or Instagram, as well as some other social media outlets as Josie Lewis Art. Thanks a lot. Hope to see you again.